So, okay, there we go. That's that's the voice we want to hear. Okay, Dr. Catherine Alton is coming in. I'm looking for Pastor Wright. She's not on there, is she? I yeah. don't see her now. Right. Uh -uh. Okay, I need her to come on to, to do that for me. Okay, um, I do want to go over your homework. Um, and even though we're gonna go over tonight, I'm still expecting to see it, uh, to look at your guys' homework. And uh, so, but the first question that stood out, I'm looking at uh, is, um, is shame and ingredients to repentance. I've read what some of you guys have. I have overseers right in front of me and uh, I looked at several others. Uh, um, I give her a call, Reverend uh, Minister uh, McClendon. Uh, for some reason, yours would not open up. I, and I'm, normally it does, but Reverend uh, Wright said it couldn't open up. I don't know if there was anything any different or not. But we'll, but I do acknowledge that you did send it, but we weren't able to open it up on, on either end. Um, there was another. Okay, person. I'll send it in a different form. Okay, I appreciate that. I'll send it in. A, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, okay. And uh, I don't think um, that's a brown um, that was sent hers in a form that we weren't able to open as well. But okay, so uh, is is shame an ingredient uh, of repentance? Uh, anyone that like to start off? Um, Dr. Short. Yes. Uh huh. I put on uh, my paper. I put that shame is a part of an ingredient of repentance. Uh, most people are motivated. Um, not all, but most are motivated by shame and guilt. And this brings on a sense of sorrow and of urgency to repent. That's what I put on there. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? I'd like to go down. Yeah, uh -huh. One of the things that I put down was that shame uh, would be the perhaps beginning ingredient to repentance. Um, I expressed last week, and I'll express again, my hesitancy, remembering this was, book was written hundreds of years ago, um, I would express my hesitancy to really kind of hammer into people the idea of needing shame, since people need, feel so much shame because of abuse and things they've been through, that if we're not careful, if shame lingers too long, it can become a tool for the devil. And the devil begins to say, you're not worthy of God's love. You're not worthy of forgiveness. So I think that shame could kind of be that two-edged sword if we're not careful. We have to use that word responsibly. So I would say it's the beginning ingredient of sin, of repentance. However, I like to call it conviction. I think that's a more generative word because I always tell people the devil deals in condemnation and mm -hmm. God deals in conviction. And so the devil wants us to be condemned and God wants us to just be convicted so that we will turn from our sin. So uh, I use that word very hesitantly in terms of shame, but um, I would say it could be the beginning ingredient, but we cannot linger there because it's too dangerous. Okay, um, anyone else? Well, I had put down yes, I like what the sister before me said, though, because that was on point. But I said, unless um, you recognize that you are in error, then you have no realization that anything needs correction. So upon further examination, you realize how far off the mark you are. And that could cause some element of embarrassment and shame. And I also put down that the Bible gives clear instruction and examples of godly living. And if we aren't striving to live holy, there should be shame and then repentance as well as course correction. Okay. Um, so give me, please, the definition of shame because I'm not really getting the definition. I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing, but give us a clear definition of how, what is shame? Is shame just being convicted? Shame is an ingredient of repentance. Uh, what is the definition? It's feeling of guilt, uh, regret, sadness, or embarrassment for something that you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Is that from the book? 
Reverend Bright, is that from the book? Is that what the book is saying? No, I got it from the dictionary. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Shane. I would agree with that. I think that mm -hmm. it's a deep feeling of guilt, a deep feeling of remorse, a deep feeling of sadness concerning an action. Um, uh, but a deep, uh, uh, um, a deep feeling of, uh, I think it has to do with personal condemnation though, which is this, which is where my trepidation comes in. It's this personal, because when you feel shame, it goes beyond just guilty. Shame mm -hmm. has to do with a feeling of unworthiness, right? Mm -hmm. I am ashamed. You, you people say I'm ashamed of myself, mm -hmm. right? So it's this feeling of self-condemnation. There's something that I've done that wrong, something wrong with me, so I am ashamed. Okay. Um, Is it possible for a person to feel convicted without necessarily feeling, feeling shame? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is why I pick conviction because conviction doesn't then turn it on us, which God doesn't want and start beating ourselves up and saying how bad we are and how unworthy we are. And how, I mean, the world does that enough. The devil does that enough. I don't think God wants that for us. I think what he wants and what's more generative is conviction, right? Mm -hmm. When you are convicted, I should not have done that. That was a sin against, against God. I feel bad for that. I'm not going to do that again. That's conviction not condemnation, because condemnation is when we start going into shame. I just don't think that's emotionally or spiritually healthy. Okay. Um, okay, um, let me ask this. Uh, when it comes down to conviction, um, I, I believe, uh, maybe I'm gonna make a statement instead of a question, I think this is more of a statement. Chapter eight deals with getting, getting to repentance quickly. It, it talks about moving quickly. Those, everybody read, look at chapter eight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. I, I want to yes. see some nodding of the head. Yes. So that's about doing something quickly. So those people that repent quickly more than likely are not gonna feel shame because people that repent Quickly, and, this, and I'm not talking from the book. I, I looked at what he said, but I like I like my own answers because I have my own experiences. Um, but um, there are times that when you commit a sin, you know it's wrong, uh, not necessarily based off of your emotion, because you know it's wrong because you know that it's the opposite of what God's will is. And so, if you repent quickly, it, it again going back to what you're saying over here, it stops that shame. And I'm not saying that shame is not always bad, because there are some people that that uh, that can't, because of whatever circumstance they're in, they can't repent quickly. They gotta think about what they they've done, and it's a, a repenting is a slow process. And sometimes a slow process is needed because they need to really count up the cost of what they just did. And, and they need to think about the whole process of what took place. So it, it can't always be speedily. Um, so, but I, I do agree that shame uh, is not always necessary. But what I want to ask also is this, um, because a person feels shame, does that mean that they necessarily have guilt? No, not necessarily. Because some people are shamed just because of the fact that they know what they did is wrong, but it's not necessarily a guilt that'll make them turn from what they're doing. It's a shame that, you know, um, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I heard people say, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but this is just how I am, this is me. That is not a guilt, it's not a, convic it's not a conviction, it's not something that'll make them turn and go the op opposite, that go the right way. You know, okay, you use the word conviction. Where does conviction come from? From Conv God. Well, the, what the author talks about, where does, based off what the author is saying, he, he okay, he used the word conscious a lot. Mm -hmm. I typed in conscious, and he used conscious 99 times. Um, and, I'm, and I'm having a problem with that. That's why I, I, I sometimes I like to, you know, go away from the book. Um, and, because I have my own, um, I have plenty of experience with sin. So uh, I don't know if I had no problem with that put the class, but, uh, but I'm just being real with you. Um, now, if, is it possible for me 
to feel guilty and shame and feel like I've done something wrong, feel convicted. And so is that always, if you're feeling all that, would you say that's more than likely you're guilty of sin? If you're feeling convicted, feeling shame, and you're feeling all these different things, more than likely, would you say that more likely you have sin that you need to repent of? Yeah. Oh, somebody else is speaking? Who said yes? I'm Minister McClendon. Okay, go ahead. You, 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 you feel yes. If a person is feeling, feeling convicted, uh, they're feeling shame, then more than likely they need to repent of something. Yeah. Okay, I, okay. I want to turn to First John 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, 1 John 3, 20. And I want everybody to read that for me. Someone to read it out loud when you get it, please. I don't need everybody to do it for someone. (laughs) Okay, Googlers, let's go. Okay, um, Mm -hmm. I'll read it. Go ahead, please. Okay. That if our heart condemns us, that God is greater than our heart and he knows all things. Okay, uh, let, let's just focus on that scripture for a minute. Okay, um, if our heart condemns us, and we're talking about combinations, feeling shame and, and all of that, but why is John saying, if our heart is giving us all these emotions, these feelings, but then it goes on to say that God is greater? That, Someone that, explain that. Go ahead over there. That's, that's what I was saying before. <laughs> Condemnation is not from is not from god god is not about combination the devil is the devil is about shame and you're not worthy and all of that so it says if our heart condemn us and we know that the enemy wars with our heart god is greater than our heart god wants to get us to conviction not for us to sit in shame right uh and the other thing that i wanted to say is that one of the problems i have with the book is that I feel like the author writes as though all of this is a one size fits all and everybody feels the same or can feel the same Mm -hmm. thing at the Mm -hmm. same time, which just isn't true. And so a lot of people repent because of different things. I think about Aristotle's rhetorical appeals, Mm -hmm. right? So in other words, there's some people, logos, logic. There's some times where you can sit down with someone and logically go through something, that rhetorical appeal, and they'll say, you know what? That makes sense. I was wrong. And they're not seeing their crying and feeling shame. You talk to them logically, they understood it logically, and they can repent from that. Logos. There are other ethos, passion, feeling. There's some people that have to feel all this emotion to repent right? And then there's ethos, ethic, in terms of uh, ethos has to do with uh, trusting the speaker. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes to you, someone who you trust, your spiritual father, spiritual mother, whomever you put that spiritual trust in, and they speak to you because they have said it, because they have said it to you, then you'll be able to see it in a way you could hear or hear it in a way you could hear it from anybody else. So I really think like Aristotle's rhetorical appeals helps us to understand it's not a one size fits all. Everybody doesn't fall to their knees weeping in order to repent. Mm -hmm. People repent in different ways. Sometimes Mm -hmm. they need to explain logically because they're a very logical person. Sometimes it has to be emotional. And then sometimes it has to be that ethos in place where they have to trust the speaker. Like remember King David, remember the prophet came to him I mean, David had what? He had killed a man, taken a man's wife, had a baby with her, and still didn't know he was wrong until the prophet came to him and said, you are the man. Mm -hmm. And because of ethos, because he trusted the speaker, he repented. So it's not a one size fits all. Amen. Awesome. Okay. Very good argument that you just gave there. And that was pretty much put in a better sense than what I would have ever done. Um, but because I don't, I'm not one that you're going to see crying all the time. Every time, I mean, that means we're crying every day. I mean, we're, 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 we're breaking out in tears that we can't even go to work because I'm crying. 
But the <laughs> author says we should cry every day, which I don't agree with. No, 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 no. You're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna do that. No, every time you send, mm -hmm. but I, but you put it in a very articulate manner and and well received by everyone. I do believe. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, let's go back to the scripture again because I think everybody needs to recall and remember the scripture, First John, okay, three twenty. You need to really, because this scripture is not talked about much. It's very rarely quoted. Most people are really hunting it down because nobody really talks about it, but it's important. God is greater than a heart. There's another side of looking at that as well, everyone. Okay, there are times, okay, if you were raised, um, I can, well, you're, I'm doing my black, if you were raised and you were taught something, over and over and over again that marrying white men and white, marrying white women is wrong, that it's, it's not right and all of that. So you, you're 16 years old now. You're saying uh, a young man or a young woman, whatever, you know, well, and you you kind of liking that person, you're going to feel some type of conviction because of conscience of what was told you. You know that you're getting ready to break mama's or daddy's teaching. And so there is a type of conviction or a feeling. There are a lot of uh, young people that were taught something by their parents, especially hate, uh, especially what, uh, yes, I, I would go there, especially hate. Um, and, and, and we're seeing that hate is on the increase today. And, and 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 they don't know no better that they they weren't raised up in church they were they were weren't raised up around morally and ethical people so they so they believe that as mama and daddy say that black people are nasty no good dogs then then you know but then they go to school and meet one of these little black kids hey this guy's not bad but now they can't tell mom and they got a black friend so this person is at, at, at time experience shame experience guilt not because of the Holy Ghost, but because of conscience. My point is that conscience is not always right. So God has said, if your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart. You can not always depend on conscience. My point is that God did not give Christians conscience. God gave humanity conscience. He gave the Holy Ghost for Christians. Mm. Amen. That's my point. Uh, and let me say it again. God gave humanity conscious before, before the Holy Ghost came on the scene. But once the Holy Ghost came, it was the Holy Ghost uh, uh, that overrides wrong conscience because the Holy Ghost knows God's will, God's word, where conscience knows man. And conscious don't know God as well as the Holy Spirit. So I think one scripture that Paul has says, uh, not not just that, but that's another scripture. But he says, but our conscience being over, I can't think of the word, by the Holy Spirit. In other words, your conscience has to be uh, submissive to the Holy Spirit in order mm -hmm. to be more perfected. Because the conscience is all over the place. The, uh, First of all, the Bible says that a person's conscience can be seared with a hot iron. Hot iron. Mm -hmm. it, it can be controlled. It can be manipulated. But mm -hmm. those things cannot happen to the Holy Spirit. You can lie to him, but he's not going to change his mind. The, the conscience can change his mind day in and day. If someone bring a better argument than, uh, than the last person you heard, you, oh, yeah, you sound right. Oh, no, you sound right. And so you, you can be, that's why Paul said, be not tossed to and fro by every, you know, doctrine. When doctrine and, and that's what happens a lot of times that we got people that are uh, double-minded because they're mm -hmm. easily tossed to and fro. They easily feel convicted over a little teeny thing. Someone bring, some because someone's articulate, uh, they believe that person must be right because they, because of how well they brought forth, you know, their, um, their, their speech. And so that's my, that was one of my little problems with the book is that I don't want to put so much weight on the conscious. I want to use the Holy Spirit. That, Dr. That's Short. Dr. Short. Yeah, the whole, over, uh, uh, um, Pastor Stan Shannon, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Short. Um, uh -huh. I'm, I'm hearing you. So you're saying that conscience conscience cannot convict us in no way no 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 no. i'm not saying that at all i'm saying the conscience is not perfect that there okay. are times that your conscience can 
can have you feeling guilty when you haven't really done nothing wrong. For instance, Paul said to the church, have I become your enemy because I give you the truth? There are times you give people the truth and they're angry at you and they're upset with you. They're no longer talking to you and you kind of feel bad. And you might be saying, well, I wish I didn't tell them that now or maybe I should have told them in a different way. So sometimes conscience, you could have done the right thing, but conscience, if you continue to listen to conscience, it'll have you thinking, well, you should have did it this way. You should have did it that way. But Paul mentioned that. Look, you know, I told you the truth. And, and, and he wasn't going to allow his conscience to dictate that. Dictate that. Again, you're not going to find, I don't believe you're going to find, I think you'll find multiple scriptures where conscience can be manipulated, but you're not going to find no scripture where the Holy Ghost can be manipulated. Oh, one more question, Dr. Short. Yeah. So um, um, do you think conscience will follow you into eternity? Well, conscience will follow you into eternity. No, I, I, I don't, because conscience is not perfect at all. There's, there's no way it can follow you into eternity, because we have to submit everything. The Bible says, first of all, that we shall be changed in a moment of twinkling of an eye. So anything that's connected to carnality is not going into heaven. That's why mm -hmm. this mortal is going to have to be changed. So that's oh. after when that mortal is gone. Again, conscience is connected to this. To this, right. it's to not connect, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's what was given to us to govern us until we got the Holy Ghost. Okay, and I only said that before because when I read about uh, there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth, all right? Hell. If you're weeping and gnashing, it seems like you are conscious of where you, <laughs> where you, where you are. Well, well uh, uh, yeah, we're talking about conscious in a different way there. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, so, so, yeah. all right. Yeah, that's two different things. Yeah, yeah. Two, okay. Yeah, unconscious and conscience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but Doctor Short, can I can I offer the scripture? Sure. I never thought about what you just said before um, about how the conscience helped us to know right from wrong, helped to govern us until the Holy Spirit came. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I just looked at Titus one fifteen, and it talked about how the conscience can be corrupted. Yep. Okay. And we when we know that the Holy Spirit cannot be corrupted. So that means that we have to lean toward the Holy Spirit, not our conscience. Not that the conscience didn't have a function at some time yes. or doesn't have a function, but that it is not the ultimate function because as you pointed out, and as Titus points out, it can be corrupted. So anything that can be corrupted, we cannot put our trust in, but we can put our trust in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit cannot be corrupted. Wow. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. Because I, I, uh, I could uh, Elder Penny, then you, um, uh, Pastor Drummond. Elder, okay. uh, no, I was just thinking of a perfect example uh -oh. of that. Okay, like you okay. can tell, you can tell somebody the truth about something and it hurts their feelings and you, it'll may sadden you because you hurt their feelings, not because you told them the truth because the truth needed to be told, but you're feeling badly because you hurt someone and you didn't intend to hurt them, right? So that's like working on your conscience because you're like, I really didn't mean to hurt their feelings, but you, the truth had to be told. True, and this is what's important, I'm coming to you, Pastor Drummond, is that when you're running revival, you don't need a conscience. Because if you had a conscious <laughs> remedy Bible, you, you need to look at people's faces. You know, oh my yeah. God, they great. Get up and you leave the church. But they, they got the keys. They didn't like what I said. You've been changing your message. You know, <laughs> you got to be unconscionable. I think that's the word. They always did I get the right unconscionable. You got to uh, be able to preach without fear or favor. Uh, fear or favor. And uh, so, but over, about um, Overseer Drummond, you had a comment. Uh, praise the Lord. That is so true. You got to be able to. Uh, tell the truth and uh, be able to stand for what is right, be apologetic and stand for what is right. And I often teach that if common sense was all we needed, then we wouldn't have the Holy Ghost. Um, you, you know, common sense is good, but you need the Holy Ghost to um, lead and guide you and, 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 you know, in all truth and righteous, because there's many times that our common sense has not always been common sense. It has Told her, we told ourselves we're going to do this, we're going to do that. That's good to do this, do that. Without the Holy Spirit agreeing with that, uh, you can make some boo-boos. So 
you know, our conscience, we got to be careful what goes in this head. It's, this mind is something. Uh, and that's why he said we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind because things get in there. And if you ain't careful and if you don't let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you, then you can make a catastrophe. So, you yes, know, we got to be led by the Spirit. Amen. If we're not condemning the mind, we're just saying right. that there is something that's a little better than the mind that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. He will still Amen. use conscience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, as far uh, in our lives, but we again, we want to make sure that uh, when we are feeling this thing, that it, it's the Holy Spirit that's given the conviction. And I think that we, what we want to do, and what the author has done, he put a whole lot of emotion into guilt. And again, um, we're not going to always. You don't always have to have a whole lot of emotion to feel guilty. Um, uh, as overseer put it so uh plainly my god someone shows you the truth um and you um and this is a person that you fully trust you take their word and you just repent god i'm wrong and i think paul uh spoke that uh in, in a couple of uh occurrences and actually when you talk about emotions you don't really see the apostles uh, slash disciples you know, when they were being saved and going through the Holy Spirit, you didn't see them going through a whole lot of emotions. They just accepted what they were uh, then. And all Jesus said was repent. And the woman was caught in the act of adultery. You know, she, she wasn't going boo-hoo and all this. He just told her, go and sin no more. He didn't tell her, stand right here and give me a and, and give me 20 hell marriage and do me a holy dance and all this. He, he, he kept it really simple. Look, just don't do it no more. Uh -huh. you know, he, he, there was no, uh, and, and, and those of you that are counselors, uh, I've, I've done a lot of counseling. I have met some professional people that could cry and still lying. They could yes, indeed. And, and, <laughs> and stand in front of you lying, and they are good at it. So, emotionalism is not an indication of guilt or whatever, because there are people today that are professionals at, at, um, at, at emotions to manipulate your mind, making mm -hmm. you feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is so true. Dr. Short? Yes. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, I get them in my nursing office all the time. Uh, and, you know, and they know the people that have compassion. They know the people that have love, you know, and you have to be able to cipher between what is real and what's not real. And the Holy Spirit, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit allows me to be able to, uh, you know, deal with all that stuff in my office because they will try to manipulate the system, try to manipulate you and anything else just to get certain medications, just to do certain things. And if you uh, allow your conscious mind to go along with the emotions, you'll get entangled into what they're doing. So you have to be conscious all the time and let the Holy Spirit uh, lead and guide you into what to do when you're working with people. Amen. Okay, we're getting ready to stop and we got something else we need to do. We told you earlier on that this is the last class, okay? So you won't be back here next Thursday. But it's, uh, but let's not quite rejoice because I do need some work. What you've been studying is the doctrine or understanding of repentance. But there's one element that's missing big time. And that is the study of sin. Uh, I need you to look it up right now. What is, find out what is the study of sin. Look it up and tell me what it is. Go ahead, Google it. <laughs> I got a whole sheet of papers on it somewhere in here. <laughs> what What is the study of sin? Where is it called? Starts with an H. Yeah, he Hermo top top mm. H E R. I cannot hold on. I'm yeah, you got it, but so, yeah. come on, my Googlers. What is it? Go ahead, uh, uh, pass, um, Pastor uh, Shannon. Yeah, Dr. Bohannon. Say it again. I think it's Hermotetology is a study. That's of it. Okay, so okay, this is how sin is originated. Okay, so this is what I need in order to make this class fully. Um, well, to, I mean, talking about repentance, but I think we need to back up just a little bit. 
uh, and I want to look at sin. I want us to, I need, especially those of you that's on the master's level and doctorate level, I need you to give me uh, several papers on the origin of sin. Um, and, and this is going to be really great at heart. Uh, I'm trying to pull up my paper. Hold on just a minute. Um, Dr. Shaw, did we do this in another class? Hormatology? I'm, I might have mentioned it, but I don't think I've ever taught hormatology before. Okay. I might, we might, it might have came. The word, I'm sure the word came up because I talked about it before and I also talked about the study of sin and I talked about the study of salvation, study of salvation, and so, soteriology and, and hormatology, these two together. Many times they talk back to back. But uh, can everybody see what's in, in, on the screen? Yes. Okay, yes. these are questions that I need to be answered. You're not in class next week. I need this done by the, uh, the, the, the the first Thursday night in next, first Thursday night of next month is next Thursday, right? I want to yes. give you, I want to give you 10, oh, yeah. 10, what is 10 days from now? Somebody give me the, the, the exact date, 10 days from now, where, where are we at? It's the 7th. Okay, by the 7th, okay. Yeah. Um, I need this assignment handed in by the 7th. This is going to be a test. This is your test. And this is the question I'm looking for. And I'm going to grade it really hard because mostly we didn't have some of these things in other courses. First of all, what is sin? Don't use this book. This book is okay, but I need you to give me a, a uh, those of you on the master's level, I want it look like that you're on the master's and doctoral level. Though we say, where did sin originate? Please don't say the devil. I will give a zero on that. Don't say the devil. I, 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 I got second graders that'll say that, 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 that knows that, to say that. Okay, what is the origin? Okay, again, I don't want to hear the devil. I, I need to go much deeper than that. Uh, we don't need uh, theology schools to, for those simplistic answers. Okay, what were the, the effects of the uh, origin of sin? Effects of uh, original sin, excuse me. Now, this 14 point indicates does not be, in, don't put that down. The 14 points, okay, don't put that down. The only, I, I do want to go to the other one. I want to talk about infants and babies. It does mention it there. I want to discuss that because that is a topic that of debate for many people. And then the last one, I want five reasons why God allowed bad things to happen. We got 10 days for this. No class next Thursday. So keep on going past next Thursday. But I need this in. Okay, you said don't do, I'm sorry. Don't do the, words don't the 14 do the, points. Don't do the 14 points, okay. No, no. Okay. Don't do, the, okay, don't do the 14. What did you mean? You said you need several papers. What does that mean? Well, more than likely, those of you on the master level, in order for you to answer this question, I know that you're going to have at least three or four papers on this. Mm -hmm. Three, but why would it need to be three separate papers instead of one congruent paper? Oh no 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 no! I mean it's three separate, but I'm I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> but well, this is what I want. I want this to be done in the APA style. I want it to be I want it to be uh, separate by one line. So don't put it all together, running together. Okay, I need to be in like, at least a 12 double space. I don't know what you mean by one. A single space, a double space, excuse me, double space. Okay. Double space. Dr. Short, we had talked before, I asked you offline, because uh, there are those of us who are versed in MLA, and you had said that was fine. Yes, but, in, but again, because I got to read all of this, I want double space in this. That allows me to be able to read it without everything running together. No, no, I'm not talking about double space. I'm talking about MLA. Can we right, right. We're talking about the MLA. Right. Yeah, I, re MLA I recall the okay? conversation. I recall that. MLA is okay. Yes, that's fine. Uh huh. Um. So I need you I, again, everybody. I if it's running together, I'm not gonna read it. I, I'm just not gonna read it. It's just too much. And because you're doing it space like that, you should easily have at least three papers or so because you are, you're, 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 because of the space that you're given that. 
but mm -hmm. I want full answers. I guess, in other words, I'm not so much caught up into the, the amount of pages. I want full answers. Just don't say the devil. <laughs> because cause, cause his name would, would not answer not one of these questions. Uh, what is what is the original sin? He wouldn't answer that word. Did sin originate? You can't. You just can't just say his name and, and that'll be okay. That's okay if you're in church, Sunday school, Bible study. That may be okay. And I kind of want to talk about it a little bit, but those of you that had Bible One, Bible One Advanced, you should be eating this up because we talked about um, about this, the origin of sin. And guess what? When I looked up the origin of sin tonight, just to see what some of the websites said, most of the websites said Genesis. And guess what? Every last one of them was wrong that they went to the National School of Theology. Because Genesis is not the origin of where, where sin started. They said in the garden. And it's, it didn't just start in the garden. Nope. Mm -mm. So don't, don't think because it's online, it's right. Because I already checked. Because a lot of them are wrong. They said that sin started in the garden, and it did not. Nope. So, so that's pretty much it. Now, if you need to talk to me about graduation. You need to talk to me uh, tomorrow. I do apologize. Some of you are supposed to call today. My phone was in crazy mode. It would receive calls, but would not allow me to uh, make calls, but it started working around 5, 30, 6 o'clock or something. So, but please give me a call tomorrow. Make sure that you're getting their proper caps and gowns. Those of you, uh, but most of you have already contacted me. Some of you know that you're graduating not till November. Others know it's going to be this June. Um, but if you haven't talked to me, please get in contact with me so we can get everything straight. Now, I want to say this. You're not going to, this is your last class till July. You're going to have about a month break. You're going to get an email. That's going to let you know about the next courses, but you got almost a four week break. So take your time and give me your best work on this. Please take your time. Give me your best on this because this is your last. Okay. This is your last. So if you got to get your grandchild or somebody that, you know, that can type it up, get them to do it. Okay. Pastor Drummond, get somebody to do it for you. I got it. My church secretary, I done already beat their in. <laughs> okay. 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 So, uh, So we need for everybody to give me your best work on this one. And you have at least 10 days to get that done. Okay. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. This will be on YouTube. If you need to go back and hear it again, give me about an hour. It will be on YouTube. Okay. Enjoyed you guys. Enjoy the lesson. It was great. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And God, we ask that you forgive us for every sin, every fault, every failure that we have made. God, allow us, dear God, to continue to indulge ourselves in your grace and your mercy. And God, we depart from this class, but not your presence. God, let the words of our mouth and the message of our heart be accepted in that sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, our soul says amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Good night, everyone. God, God bless. bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wonderful, wonderful summer. All yes. right, bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>